Psalm 78, I'm going to read that through for you. This is, this is a really great, a favorite psalm of mine. Uh, I picked up on this a few years ago, and it, it's really, really stuck out to me massively. Um, we'll look at it. it I, I look from verse 3, maybe, because of, because of time. Um, what we have heard and what we have known, what our fathers have told us, we will not hide them from their children. We will tell the next generation. Amen? Are you up for that? If you don't teach your children to be committed to Christ, the world will teach them not to be. We will tell the next generation. We will not hide it from them or their children. It's time to not be ashamed of the gospel again. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Would you agree with me? We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our forefathers to teach their children so that the next generation would know them and the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children that they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. They would not be like their forefathers, stubborn and rebellious generations whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful in him. And it goes on to speak about the children of Israel who really failed in many, many ways. Um, the amazing thing is, is that God is faithful, as I said before, and he wants us to exercise faithfulness towards him. And, and, and the, God really blesses faithfulness in our lives. A lot of the gospels, a lot of the narratives in the gospels are actually teaching us to be faithful to God and that fruitfulness comes in our lives uh, through faithfulness. So we're doing okay? Are we getting anything on the screen here? Have we lost it? It's on. Okay. So generational church is what we're looking at. I won't be able to uh, look at all of this today, and I'll have to come back to some of these points. Um, but hopefully I will be able to, well, I'm not being able to change it. So uh, yeah, we are there. Okay. So, so what I want us to look at is generational church. And a lot of what we're doing in September, we have a load of new stuff happening. And it's really important that we as a church get behind this. Don't just, just treat this as just something that's happening that doesn't affect you. Because that's one of the troubles in local churches. We come and we think, right, 70% of the service doesn't affect me. Therefore, it doesn't apply. But yes, it does. It's very short-sighted to think that things don't actually involve you or have some impact on you. Yes, they do. Whatever age we are, the local church will impact your life in the future in some shape or form. Your children and your children's children will be affected by the, the, the depth and the quality of local churches that exist after we've gone. To think anything otherwise is really short-sighted. Do you agree with me? You know, what kind of a world will our children and our children's children be living in? What kind of a church will we leave behind? These are the questions we, we can't wait to answer them in 10 years' time. We've got to start thinking about it now. That's why Light Force and the children's ministry in our church has got to be given not the ashes, but the best part of our efforts and resources. It shouldn't get the dregs. It's no use dedicating children to the Lord month by month and doing nothing with them on the Sunday when it's in our hand and in our power and in our responsibility to shape and form them as they're growing in God. Hello. So I honestly believe that this cannot be a Cinderella ministry. It has to be of primary importance, not just for the future, but now. As, as Rich quite rightly said, we, we refer to them as kids, and they are kids, and you can see them behaving like kids. And we say, to, we say of ourselves sometimes, don't behave like a kid, don't we? Yeah, thank you, Luke. 
It's an honest Welshman here. Um, listen, the, the, the point is, these kids are not just our future, they're here now. People are getting responsibility in our world, younger and younger and younger. You will, that's not going to change. Uh, you, you're going to find that 20-somethings are going to be prime ministers and leading people, physicists and all kinds of things in the future. That the, the world is getting younger in many respects. Responsibility is getting younger in many respects. We have got to shape and form the children to be men and women of great authority in Jesus Christ. It is not going to happen unless we invest now, today, this year. We have to build the church of tomorrow today. We have to do it today. We can't wait to do it. You know, an inheritance is something that we all gain. But a legacy is something that we leave behind. And we have to work at that now. That is something we need to think about now. It's too late in 10 years' time to start thinking about it. You cannot fit the smoke alarms when the house is burnt down. That, that goes for everything in life, guys. That goes for marriages. That goes for relationships. Relationships don't just stop. They wither to a halt. Things happen and deterioration sets in. We don't just become bankrupt overnight. It happens over a period of time. And what I'm saying is we need to put stuff into our lives that, that helps us to become stronger and more consistent in our lives. Does anybody agree with that? And churches are like that. I want the local church to continue to be the hope of the world. Because the, the, I'll tell you now, the Christian witness throughout the whole of the world comes down to local church. It doesn't come down to denominations. It doesn't come down to any headquarters. It comes down to what's happening at grassroots level where men and women are coming to Christ and getting discipled and getting baptized and getting taught how to walk with the Lord on a day-by-day -day basis. That, that's reality. Heaven will not be populated if the church is minnow-sized. Does anybody agree with me? Come on, guys, are you there? Have you woke up yet? I'm going to have to do a pulse check on you in a minute. I, seriously, where's Dr. Eddie? Can you please check these people's pulses? They, they just look like they've had too much breakfast or something. I don't know. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God has given us in terms of the resources because the resources God has at his disposal are not buildings, they're not mechanical things, they are people. And we have some fantastic young people in our church. Do I hear an amen? Do, do I hear anybody getting excited about that who's over 30? Come on, guys. Parents, I, 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 honestly, I get more excited than you do in your kids. Seriously. I am being serious. I can get enthusiastic about your sons and your daughters more than you are doing sometimes. That right, Joe? Isn't that right? Isn't that right, guys? Have you seen that? Nancy, do you, have you seen that? Yeah. So come on. It's time. Where are, where are these Light Force teachers? If you're that enthusiastic, where are you? I'm, this is a call this morning to stand up and start building the church of tomorrow today. This is a time for you to stand up and say, I don't want to get involved in lo local church because I've been hurt. Don't get out of bed then. <laughs> if you don't want to get hurt in life, go to bed and don't go, to, go into hibernation. If you don't want to get hurt. And the most dangerous years in your life are from 1 to 99. Okay. So if you're one of those people who, who, you know, is always in the historical process where I was hurt, therefore I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to, you know, you, you know, it's, it's bleak. It's going to be even bleaker. Leave that behind. How can you expect God to write another chapter in your book if you're living in the old one? You have to move on from that stuff. We've got to keep going. We have to have a, a mentality of progression as children. We walk in the walk of faith. It's a movement forward. We're running the race. It's not a race backwards. It's not a walk backwards. It's a walk forward. Okay, there's sometimes when we have to stand, but we never go back. 
The only reason why we should ever look back is to, to learn from things in the past and then to move on. Okay? And, and, and I just sense, guys, if we, if we really want progression, if we really, really want God to bless, if we really, really want expansion, if we really, really want growth, if we really, really want the impact that the Holy Spirit wants to bring, then we have to progress. And that means us standing up and saying, Lord, here am I. Don't send someone else, send me. It means standing up and saying, there's a place I can fill. There's something I can do. The need is the call in the house. I put this up because this is a really, really incredible, factual incident that happened in 2004 at the Athens Olympics. I want to tell you about this because this is powerful. It's weighty. The UK team, the great British team, and I'm not a patriarch in that respect, you know, uh, you know me, I'm a multinational guy. I can rejoice even in the Aussies doing something. <laughs> Apart from winning in cricket or whatever. If, the, the rugby, I love the Lions this, this, this year. But anyway, sorry, is there an Aussie in that? Oh, sorry, Brenton. So he just said, sorry. I did know you were there, actually. It was just, you know. It's, not, it's seldom we can get one on the Aussies. So when we do, we really milk it. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, uh, the, 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 the point is about this, these guys. The, the Americans, this is one on the Americans. The Americans were the actual pre-race favourites by a country mile. Nobody else stood a chance of, of, of winning the relay race. So off it goes, the forerunners of all the nations competing. And guess what? Great Britain won the gold. <laughs> Woohoo! It was, it was great. I remember seeing, do you know... The Americans, the Americans are great athletes and usually just win it outright, don't they? They win everything that they see, you know. Um, when, when they were running the race, they were in front. The UK team didn't win it because they were the fastest. They didn't even win it because they were the best or the most prepared even. They won it because the one thing that they really worked hard at was this, the handing over of the baton. And when the Americans ran, they were quicker but they fumbled the handover, and it cost them the race. The smoothest handover was when the Brits handed over the baton, and the rest, as they say, is history. They won the gold because they handed over the baton. Do you know churches seem to be rubbish at handing over the baton? They fumble it, they stumble it, and they fall. And churches sometimes have a glorious past and the next group of people come in, it's like a cross to carry. But we ought to be a church who, who say, we want the best to always be in the future. For our children and our children's children and the generations to come, that the Rubens, that the Danny Marxes, that these kids down the front here are gonna be the heroes of the future, the champions of the future in the local church. They're going to accomplish things we only ever dreamed of. They're going to see resources released from heaven that we could only ever imagine. They're not going to be messing around with a couple of thousand pounds here and there for a couple of car parks. They are going to be getting the whole of this complex over here and they're going to be possessing the land and inheriting the land and they're going to be taking the Jerichos of this world by force because they are standing on the shoulders of people and, 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 and our ceiling has become their floor. Do you get that? That's, that's the dream that we ought to have. Not The pastor shouldn't just have that dream. The leaders shouldn't just have that dream. The parents in this church should have that dream. You should have that aspiration for your children. You should have it for your grandchildren. You should have it for those, Psalm 78 says, are not yet born. Do you know what we're doing when we're building local church? We're building a, a, a legacy that will outgrow you and be bigger than you. It's totally unselfish. We, we, are, we are building something that's far, far bigger than ourselves when we're, we're building local church. And I, I agree with Brian Houston in, in, in Australia. We need to make our gifts and our abilities align themselves with the heart that we have for the local church. We really need to do that. There's so many complaints about local churches. We, we just need to get a life. Because local church was Jesus' idea. And, and they might all be imperfect and they might be, you know, they're all full of people like us. 
People who are imperfect. People who are struggling. People who have faults. People who have failings. People who have not yet made it. Hello. This is us. We're the best he's got. He hasn't given up on you. He hasn't given up on me. He's still blessing us. Why? Because you're a work in progress. Guess what? So am I. This church, will you join with me in saying that prayer from your heart? I want this church to go on and be the strong church that God wants it to be, that desires it to be, that is ready for the next generation, that is ready for the generations to come, that will serve the Lord in whatever hour or whatever decade or whatever century the Lord may have it in. I want, I want this church to be a church that stands firm, that shines bright, that radiates Christ's love. And, and brings to pass things which are just incredible in Jesus' name. That's a church. That's a, that's a church. I want to belong to that missional church. I want to belong to that generational church, don't you? Praise God. The, the, you know, generational church, it, 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 it's sometimes messy. Can somebody talk me through this? I don't know. Sometimes generational church is a bit uncomfortable. It's a bit challenging. Things change. People wear trousers around their ankles. <laughs> it's a good job that there's Calvin Klein printed clearly on underwear these days, isn't it? You know, and I look at that, and there's a side of me which is saying, what, what, uh, anyway, but there's a side, but then there's a side of me saying, it's just the way things are. We have, to, we have to accept that there is a generation of people, there's a generation of people who talk differently, see things differently, and dress differently. I, do you know what I thought when I saw that? Imagine a 58-year-old dressing like that. Seriously, I am not going there, right? Okay. And I don't have Calvin Klein's anyway. So anyway, imagine one Sunday if I came in. To, you, you know, I would have Justin and Joe preparing me for counselling after the service, wouldn't I, you know? And goodness knows what Lisa's face would look like if I came in like that as well, you know? Is, is our pastor really lost it? And I'd just say probably never had it. But anyway... Um, Sometimes generational church will make you feel uncomfortable. Seriously. Sometimes it'll get messy. I know how hard it is. Sometimes we have the, our wonderful people who clean this place from, from wall to wall throughout the week. And then the kids come, and the adults, and they mess it up. So that they can clean it again from wall to wall. So that it can get messed up again. And things get broken and things... And, and we, could all, we could all turn around and say, you know, I'm fed up with this church. There are that many kids around. And then you could go and you can leave and you can go to another church where there are no kids. How boring is that? It's, it's about getting perspective, guys. I, I'm glad the house is filled with kids and young people. I'm glad that there's youth. And sometimes if they just skateboard in here and knock me over, I'll just have to remember that. Yeah? But not when I'm in my car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the reality is, is that sometimes it, we, we, we'll be made to feel uncomfortable. Sometimes the music isn't our music. Sometimes we do want the old rugged cross instead of the hip hop and the Mari on his rap. But the Mari could quite easily get the rugged cross and put it to rap. That wasn't a, a prod, by the way, Amari. I, I just want to say that, that, that the statistics are frightening. 1904, 60% of children in our nation were in Sunday school. 60%, over half the children. In 2004, 100 years later, there were 4%. And you want to know what's wrong with society? And I know you can make statistics, say anything you want, but the bottom line is 
a 56% drop in that 100 years of children getting a sense of biblical teaching. I, I, I wouldn't want to know what we are now. I hope we're more than 4%. I don't know. But unless we as a church get our act together for the future, it's going to be worse. We are the salt of the earth, yeah? Jesus said it. We are the light of the world, yeah? Jesus said it. Therefore, we are the hope of the world as the local church. There's no point looking for politicians to fix stuff. There's no point looking to doctors to fix. You can't put a bandage on a broken heart. You can't give tablets all the time to somebody who's got an internal problem where they need Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, to come and redeem their life and come and be a new creation in his presence and, and the wonderful sense of praising God and the wonderful value that God brings to a soul when a soul is cleansed. He's just marvelous. They're too great for words. Come on. Don't you agree with me? You know, we've got a message to give that the will cannot give. We've got a Savior to bring to them that the will cannot give. We've got something in Christ and something in the power of the Holy Spirit that cannot be offered anywhere else. But you can and I can because if you're freely received, freely give. Okay? And you know, I know it's uncomfortable sometimes for us. It was Mark Pugh, Serious for God in Elim, turned around and said, and it stuck with me. Young people don't leave churches today because there's too much to do. They leave because they get bored. They leave because people don't trust them with things. They, they leave because people don't invest in them. And I'm saying to you, Light Force is just one of the areas. Accelerate that we started our, our, our Youth Gap Year program is another way we are investing in young people for the future. When we launch our new Excel service on a once, on a, once a month on a Sunday evening, Mags and I are writing to every single one of you to garner support for that one night so that we might not just say yes isn't it a good thing that Billy's doing such isn't it a good thing that Monica's such a great singer we're not just saying those things those are platitudes what we're saying is all of those things and we're coming to support them and we're coming to cheer them on as they as they play for the side we are coming we are not just going to be spectators and couch potatoes we are going to come along and cheer the side on that's winning we're going to know what it is to be cheerleaders, the ministry of a cheerleader. Any of you going to get that for us? Who wants to be a cheerleader in the, in the house of God? Come on, put your hand up. Who, who's going to be a cheerleader? Come on, give Emmerdale Farm a break. They don't need you cheerleading them, for goodness sake. So when Excel starts in October, let's be here to cheer the side on. Be here to cheer your leaders of the next decade on. Amen. Be here with excitement and say, you know, we're going to get behind the squad. We're going to get behind. At the end of the day, there's no entrance fee. I know people today who've gone to match and all the rest of it, and they've paid an absolute fortune to go to watch the football. It's not a problem. I saw an amazing thing at City, Man City's ground. City till I die, they sing, don't they? City till I die. Somebody put a caption of a pork pie, City till I die. Six pounds a pie. City till I dine. You get it? I thought it was quite clever, actually, myself. People will pay astronomical amounts to follow their football team and cheer them on when they score. They can't do squat diddly for the local church sometimes. Come on. I'm talking about Christians. Who's with me in saying it's about time we stood up? And said, let's take this thing forward. Let's go forward in Jesus Christ. Let's have a synergy. Let's have a tied up energy in the local church that sees things going from strength to strength to see the blessing of God upon what we bring on the altar in Jesus' name. You know, God, God, God blesses what we put on the altar. Sometimes we're not putting anything on. And then we say, Lord, bless me, let's bless me, bless me. Bless. God doesn't bless nothing. God won't use nothing. Even if it's loaves and fishes, there has to be something that God can bless and impart his power to. 
So there might be kids running all over the place. The music might not be our music. Yeah, we know sometimes it's loud. Sometimes, it, But our, I think our worship team are fabulous. I think our youth band are getting better and better all the time. And when, when I go on mission, I come back from Romania. I said a few years ago to Mags, I said, do you know, I'm getting too old for this drive into Romania, Malarkey. I'm going to train up a couple of our young people, Jesse and a few of the others. And we've got Madder now and Danny. And when Danny passes his test in a couple of years, and off you go in the car. You can, you can drive. I'm flying over. Amen. <laughs> you know, uh, but you, for a few years, I said to Max, I'm just going to fly over from now on. I'm getting too old for all this driving business. And the Lord, the Lord spoke to, into my spirit as, almost as soon as I said it. No, you're not. I was like, what was that? No, you're not. You're driving. You, you carry on driving. I thought, well, why is that? And then somebody gave me a book, and I read in the book, and, and, and it was about a pastor who had the same experience. And the Lord said to him, you carry on driving because I've put you there with the young people so you can see what's in them. And there's nothing like the road team to see what your young people are like. I love, I love the fact that people flew out, don't get me wrong. Hey, guys, it's not a problem. Okay, lovely, wonderful. But there's nothing like the road team to show your pastor what you're made of. There's a lot of stuff goes in my prayer journal. <laughs> Tom. Looking at Zoe there yeah, as well, yeah. It's all in there. I'm looking along the congregation at the road team. Yeah. It's amazing. And, and you see things come out when you're on mission with your young people and your older people, Miriam. She's upstairs serving. It's just amazing what you see come out. You see the strengths and you see the weaknesses too. But you already know they're there. But the point is you see those strengths and you see how God uses people. Sylvie and Dean just hiding there behind Paulina. Yes. Lots and lots of things. Just amazing. It's amazing what Dean can do with him. in the Lord and with a bit of Red Bull. It's just incredible. <laughs> just amazing, really. But, you know, that's it. And, 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 and generational church is, is just so exciting to be a part of that. Does anybody agree with me? I'm closing. You're all right. You're looking at me now. Your eyes are rolling. It's okay. But I know as we get older, some of this stuff is, is difficult. And we're living in a different day and an age than we were 10 years ago. We can't keep doing things the way we, we did them. And then we think to ourselves, it doesn't have meaning anymore. I mean, it's incredible how language has changed now. You know, a hard drive. A hard drive used to be a drive to Romania for me. <laughs> Come back to the office and they're all talking about a hard drive. So I've just had a hard drive. No, the hard drive on the computer. You know, a cursor used to be, well, not a very nice person, but you know what I mean? It's something else now, isn't it? Cursor, all right. The web used to be some of the spider's home. Or a mouse pad used to be a house a mouse lived in. You know, all of these things, it's all, it's all different. All language has just changed now. It's just, and you know, you know you're getting a bit older when you hear all this language, like the sermon was sick. And stuff like that. But yeah, I remember that when I first heard that. It was, I think it was Dominic who told me, oh, Pastor, it was a sick sermon, that. <laughs> so annoyed, you know. <laughs> Ugh, you know. I think that was on Twitter as well. Oh, Pastor, his sermon was sick. I thought, oh, cheeky, lad, like, cheeky. I was, you know. And then somebody educated me and told me a few other words as well. Uh, but anyway, we'll not go there either. But it's, you know, generational church can be uncomfortable. But the, the thing about it is, is, is that to see young people being used by God and being developed in their character and in their witness for God, there isn't anything better. And I want to say this, guys, I, I, I really, really mean this and just flick forward to this. We've got to realize that it's not just about, sorry, that, that's, that's not gone to the slide I wanted it to, to the last one. I think you're still in charge at the back there. Not just all nationalities or all kinds of people different backgrounds, but all ages too. That's what, you know, if you're, if you're senior in years, that means you're over 21 actually, doesn't it really? If you're senior in years, we need you. We need you to be strong Christians. Some of us who are over 60, 
we should be great examples to the young people. We really should be looking at you and seeing those people who were giants and heroes of ours, who were role models of ours. Those who were 70 plus, praise God. Um, there's room for everyone in a generational church and there's need for everyone in a generational church. There's need for everyone. We need those people who are mature in years and who have got the life experience to believe in the young people and to develop and to put resources in and to invest in young people. It's their day of opportunity. Some of us had loads of opportunity and we've lived it and we've done it and we're still going strong, but youth opportunities multiply as they're seized. Keep going for God. Don't, that's why Paul said to Timothy, don't let anyone despise your youth. Keep going. Can we stand a moment?